What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to error handle web forms with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at what to do when there are errors when people fill out your web forms with Flask. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps out the channel, and check out Codeby.com, where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we created this web form, and when we fill it out, Tim Smith, Tim at Tim.com, and submit, it just posts to a page called form and it adds it to a list. And we just did this because we don't have a database yet because we haven't learned about databases. We'll learn about those in a few videos from now. But uh, you know, just basic form handling. And if we look at our code really quick in our app.py file, it's just pretty simple. We're just passing a post method to our form page, grabbing each of these variables and then doing something with them and then redirecting to this page. Well, in this video, I want to talk about errors. So there are often errors when you fill out a form online. If you don't fill out all of the fields, you get a little message that pops up that says, hey, you didn't fill out the last name field or hey, you didn't fill out the email field or or whatever. How do we do that with Flask? How, would it, how do we deal with those type of things with forms in Flask? And so that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And it is super easy. In fact, all we have to do is run a quick if statement to make sure that these fields uh, have stuff in them, right? So to do that, we're going to go down below. So we're, we're creating these variables, first name, last name, and email, and we're assigning whatever the person put in the form in the first name field, the last name field, and the email field, or the email box, I should say, on the website. And then now we just need to, to run a quick if statement to see if those variables exist. So we can just go if not, and then the variable name. So if not, first name. And if we just want to check, check for to see if they filled out the first name box, we could just leave it like this. But if we want to check for all of the fields, all the boxes, we can just use an or, right? Multiple conditional statements. Python uses or, or not last name, or not email. Then, you know, do something, right? So let's create an error statement. I don't know. And say, hey, let's say uh, all, all form fields required. Dot, 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 whatever, right? Just a little message that we want to flash up on the screen whenever they don't fill out one of the boxes on the form. Now, we use these variables right here. You could also just use this whole thing, right? So if you wanted to instead of doing this, you could just do it like that, right? But that's kind of sloppy. And we already have these variables anyway. So we might as well use them. It's just easier, right? Okay, so now we have to return a web page, right? So we want to render template. Now, what do we want to render here? Now we've got sort of a decision to make. Do we want to redirect back to that same page? Or do we want to send them to another page? All right? Well, let's do both, right? So let's start by sending them to uh, a a page called fail.html, right? We failed to fill out the form correctly. So if we save this, come back over here and just run this. Now, obviously, you know, this won't work because we don't have a fail page, but we want to just make sure that the whole thing is going. And okay, template not found, fail.html hasn't been found. Okay, so we need to create that page, obviously. So let's head over to our templates, right click and create a new file. And let's go to file, save as, and let's call this fail.html. And I'm just going to go back to my form page and let's just grab all of this stuff and paste it in here. But back here on our app.py file, let's also pass this error statement, right? So that we can access it. So error statement equals error statement. We can save that. Now, if we go back to our fail page, let's see, right here, maybe in the H1, or we could just change this to error maybe, and then below it, we can just print out that error statement, right? And we wanna get rid of this, okay? So maybe we want, well, let's just look at this to make sure it works first, right? So come back here, let's, uh, you know, we didn't put a first name, we didn't put a last name, we did put an email, 
boom, error, all foreign fields required. So at least we're getting the message and we're getting the thing. So you could do that. Uh, you could change this to all foreign fields required. Please use your back button to proceed or whatever. Okay, that works. You could also on this page put the form itself, right? So we could go, let's say, subscribe, and we can grab this form thing. Just grab the whole bunch. So copy this, head back over to our fail, and then below our error statement, we could just paste this whole thing. Now we could also pass in these variables and then propagate the form with whatever they did fill in to make it easier for them to keep, you know, to fill it out again. So let's go down to, let's see, fail. So instead of passing just error statement, we also want to pass first name equals first name. And let's start to put some of these on separate lines because this is getting hard to read. All right? So comma last name equals last name and comma email equals email. Okay. So now we can actually use these things, these variables on our fail page. So if we go to each box, this is the first name box. We can also put a value here. So value equals, and then we can pass in our first underscore name, right? And we can do the same thing for last name. So we can go value equals, and then pass in last underscore name. And then we can go down to the email one and go value equals, boom, 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 email, right? So if there is a variable, it will output it in the form box. If there isn't, it will just output nothing, right? So let's save this and come back over here and try this again. So first name, last name, both blank. We have no at no.com, so we submit it. And boom, we get error, all form fields required. First name, last name is still empty, but we could, for instance, put now John. And you'll notice it's put our no at no.com that we put in the last form, it's transferred it over. So we don't have to type it again. So that's cool. So let's submit this again. And we get another error, all form fields required. Now it says John, now it says no. Now it says, uh, let's go Smith. Now we submit this. Boom, thank you for subscribing. John Smith, no at no.com. And there we go, right? So that's definitely one way to do it. You can you know, create your own fail page or whatever. We could also do basically the same exact thing, but instead of sending us to a fail page the first time around, right? We could send it to our form page, right? Form.html, so let's do that. So come up here and change this from fail to form, or we could just send it right back to subscribe if we wanted to do that, right? Let's do that. So let's go subscribe. We still want to pass the error statement. We still want to pass the first name, last name, and email. But now we want it to go to subscribe.html. Now we're going to need to make a couple of changes to subscribe.html. So We'll do that, we'll head over to subscribe. And here at the top, we can go inside of this container maybe, we can just pass in our error message. Now, if there is no error message, this will just be blank obviously, right? And then for these form fields, we wanna do the same thing we did with our fail page. We wanna add this value tag. And instead of doing that manually, I'm just gonna grab this whole form action post and ending form, I'm just gonna copy it and paste all this back in because it's essentially the same thing. Okay. Okay, so let's save this and give this a shot. And head back to our subscribe page and you'll notice there's no error message at the top because there hasn't been an error generated yet. So let's put first name Tim and let's submit this thing. And now we're on form. We're on our form page, but we're rendering the subscribe HTML page, right? So that's interesting. And we get our all form fields required error message, which is not that impressive. But now Tim has been put there. So we can go Tim, uh, Timerson, Tim at Tim.com. We could submit this. 
and boom, it worked. All right. So that's how you could submit back to itself or you could submit back to its own page. Uh, very interesting and kind of cool. Now, if we do this, we'll try Tim again here. And we click this button, we get this thing up here. That's not very interesting looking error message. We can head over to get bootstrap if we want, click the documentation, uh, go to components. And the very first thing are these alerts, right? So if we want to make this look cool, we can do that. Uh, if we want to make it, let's see, with a little X that disappears, we can copy this code. So let's do that really quickly and just head over to our subscribe page now and to the top of the thing. Here's our error statement. So I'm just going to paste all this in and copy the error statement itself. And instead of this holy guacamole text, we can just paste that in. And OK, that should work now. So we can save this and let's reload this. Let's come back over here. Oop. And we can go Sally. And boom, all form fields required. We get this nice box. If we click it, it disappears. That's cool, but wait, we just saw something cool or something weird. If we go to the subscribe page, just on its own, this thing appears and we don't want it. We only want this to show up if there's an error message. So we need a little bit of logic really quick. So we can just come up here above our error statement stuff and let's do some Jinja and let's go if error statement, do this stuff. And then we need to end our if and if so if an error statement exists, do all this. Otherwise, this whole thing will just get ignored. So if we save this, head back over to our page and now just go to the subscribe. No error message shows up. But if we type in something and not everything, click submit all form fields required. Boom. Very cool. So that's how to handle errors with forms with Flask. Very simple. Just remember. Uh, the main thing here is, let's see, this bit of logic here, if not variable or not variable or not variable, uh, which are just the things that the people posted on the form, then do stuff, right? So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really, really helps the channel and I really appreciate. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.